Uh, let's look at four dimensions. Yeah. So I'm, I don't have a very good segue right now, except to say that I know even though I'm pretty tired and pretty sick, I can still do this. That's pretty much my motivation for doing this right now. It's not a, it's not a good motivation, but it's an honest motivation. So consider R4 with, let's say, T, X, Y, Z, where T is time and X, Y, Z are space. Um, and we'll give it the metric minus 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, in terms of physics, I'm setting C equals to 1. So, <clears throat> let's see here. How can I say this efficiently? You could look at the work form of the electric field, right? The work form of the electric field will, be, it will just be E1 dx plus E2 dy plus E3 dz. You can look at the flux form of the magnetic field. That will be um, B1 dy wedge dz plus B2 dz wedge dx plus B3 dx wedge dy. Now here, the electric and magnetic fields are both functions of space and time. So if I take an exterior derivative here, it also involves a time derivative. What would the exterior derivative so exterior differentiation time and space. Now the space part works just like usual. By the way, the, the fact that I have 1, 1, 1 here basically means that the, the flux form and the work form mappings work the same way they did in R3. There's no extra minuses for those alone. When we look at the Hodge duality on the whole space, there are some surprises there that come from the minus on the time. I'll write those down explicitly here in a minute. But let's see here, just to get it out in front of us, what's the differential of the electric field flux form? It's For the, the reasons we talked about before, it's the flux form of the curl of E. So that's what happens with the, the spatial derivatives. Plus time pieces, plus partial E1, partial T, um, dt wedge dx plus partial e2 partial t dt wedge dy plus partial e3 partial t dt wedge dz. Now I, I'm skipping some detail here guys but basically there would be f there in principle there are you know derivatives with respect to x y and z in the exterior derivative right but those follow the same pattern we looked at before in R3 and those collapse into this curl term but there's also time derivatives, which I've written explicitly. There they are. Can you rewrite those in terms of a work form or something? Look at this. If I permute, if I, if I you know, take the wedge product and, and just twist it a bit, what do we got? We've got the flux form of the curl of E minus the work form of what? Partial E partial T wedge DT. What would the exterior derivative of the flux form of B look like? Well, First of all, we have the term we talked about before in three dimensions. We have the divergence of the magnetic field times the volume form, dx wedge dy wedge dz. But then I also have time derivative terms. I've got like partial b1 partial t dt wedge dx, you know, I've got what? Plus partial b1 partial t dt wedge dy wedge dz plus partial b2, partial t, dt, wedge d, bit of it, bit of it, dz, wedge dx, plus partial b3, partial t, dt, wedge dx, wedge dy. Okay, can we rewrite this? 
in a nice way. Of course, we've got the divergence times the volume form, the x, y, g, y, y, g, z. Uh, check that out. So then I've got um, plus the flux form of partial b partial t wedge what? What's that? Yeah, wedge dt. Now, why don't I have a minus this time? We do. Is right. We have two transpositions, two two wedge flippers. Flippers, flippers, wedges. I, I shouldn't talk. All right. These are very beautiful formulas because they connect the curl in a time derivative. They connect the divergence in a time derivative. That's that's very very pretty. Now, um, so definition. Faraday tensor. Which is actually a two form, all right? The Faraday two form, more specifically in four dimensions. Uh, an an anti-symmetric object in four dimensions has how many independent components? Six. Six. How many independent components do the electric and magnetic fields have? Six. That's right. And there you have it. The Faraday tensor F is a way of writing the electric and magnetic fields as one composite object in the following way. It's the work form of the electric field, wedge dt, plus the flux form of the magnetic field. If I was to rewrite it as a matrix, F mu nu, like this. It's got zeros on the diagonal. And it's got minus E1, minus E2, minus E3 up here, E1, E2, E3 down here, and the uh, B3, minus B2, B1, minus B3, B2. Minus B1. So there's what sometimes in physics you'll see it presented in that kind of notation. But in terms of differential forms, it's just that beautiful thing I wrote right there. So what's the exterior derivative of the Faraday tensor then? Apparently, it's d of omega e by dt plus the exterior derivative of the flux form of the magnetic field, right? So then what? What happens when you have the exterior derivative of something wedge a differential? Basically, you can pull the differential out because the differential wedges, I mean, d of dt is 0, because d squared is 0 again. So we just have d omega e wedge dt plus the differential of the flux form of b. Hey, but we worked those out. What is, what is d omega e? d omega e is, uh, well, OK, so this piece we can neglect, right? Because that will wedge with dt to be 0. What are we left with? We're left with the flux form of the curl of E, wedge dt. And then, OK, well, the differential, OK, we got all this, all this stuff here, right? So we've got the divergence of B times the volume form dx wedge dy wedge dz. Then what? Plus what? Plus the flux form of the time derivative of the magnetic field, wedge dt. Aha, so we could rewrite this because the flux form is an isomorphism. If that's the flux form of the curl of E plus partial B partial T, wedge DT, plus the divergence of B, dx wedge dy wedge dz.
Joe, do you happen to know uh, Maxwell's equations? Ah, not off the top of your head. Oh, come on. That you can what? That anything you can look up? <laughs> uh, well, these are the fundamental equations of your discipline. Um, <clears throat> I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Really? I know. What? I mean, what, what, well, I mean, okay, fine. Fair enough. Why, why should why should Maxwell's equations matter to electrical engineers? Um, sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I I have. There's a certain arrogance that. It's from my youth. I, I was raised by physicists, and, and there's a certain feeling we have about engineers sometimes. And, and well, I mean, you're just playing to my certain prejudices. I, I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll try to behave. So these are Maxwell's equations. <laughs> I mean, I said something so horrible on the other day. I have to actually go edit it out. Like I, I can't, I can't post it. Yeah. It, if I say it now, <laughs> then I'm going to have to edit this one too. What's that? No, no, nothing, nothing like that. I can't, I can't even describe what it was about because it's just well. Anyway, all right. So this equal to zero, folks, is equivalent to those two equations, right? The single exterior derivative equation has captured two of Maxwell's vector calculus equations. How does Hodge duality work? Uh, how many minutes do I have left, Lorenzo? One and a half. What? One and a half. One and a half or? One and a quarter now. Hey. Um, ah. Hey, stop that. <laughs> Don't do that to me. So, the Hodge duel of, you know, one, for example, is dt wedge dx wedge dy wedge dz. Um, you know, the Hodge dual of dx wedge dy is equal to minus dz wedge dt. The Hodge dual of dy wedge dz is minus dx wedge dt. The Hodge dual of um, dz wedge dx you guess it. I'll do the wedge dt. I put in the minus 2. It's got to be y, right? So the Hodge dual of the flux form of a, of a vector field is what? Mm-hmm. It's minus the work form of the vector field wedge dt. There's a similar relation. There's a similar relation for the um, for the flux form. So the flux form um, oh, sorry, energy dissipating. Where'd that go? Come on. What's that? A lot like my time. Yeah. There's no time for us. There's no space for us. It's okay. Who wants to live for anywhere anyway? Let's see here. So the to to get to it. 
so let me say this much. The Hodge dual of the Faraday tensor works out to the flux form of the electric field minus the work form the, the, uh, of the magnetic field wedge dt. See the juxtaposition of the electric and magnetic fields? The Faraday has a, has a flux form of the magnetic field. The Hodge dual has a flux form of the electric field. See how the, the role of the electric magnetic fields have been flipped over? So when you look at the differential of the Hodge dual, you end up with something about the curl of B, the partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time, and the divergence of the electric field. Then you have to talk about the so-called four current, and you get Maxwell's two other equations with sources from the exterior derivative of the Hodge dual. I'll talk more about this some other day. I have a homework problem that you guys can work out that has like the rest of this story, but I've, I've actually done a fair bit of your homework right here, I think, by doing this. I mean, at least this thing here, this is part of the problem. I haven't posted that problem yet. Anyway, I'll shut up because apparently I'm out of time. Thanks, guys.